Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to our NIES home school. My dear students, hope you are all well by the grace of Almighty Allah. I am Shanti Rahman, Assistant Teacher of National Ideal English Fashion School, Deshi. Today I am going to take a science class for the student of class 6 and our today's class topic is chapter 6, reading done and our lecture number, uh, lecture number 9. It is our annual term and uh, in this class we will discuss about uh, chapter 6 and the name of chapter is sensory organs. Let us start our class. Chapter 6 sensory organs. Our body is an amazing machine. This machine is so flawlessly designed that we bewilder to think of it. The different parts of our body are uh, delicately assembled with no inconsistency. This part of the body function instinctively to make the body work without any commands. All the body parts are concerned about their respective roots. Things happen even before we can understand anything. For example, if a fly flies towards your eyes, they will readily blink. You will move your hands involuntarily if you accidentally touch any hot object. The moment a fish bone prick your feet, you will yelp in pain. The whole body will know that something has penetrated your feet. We can feel all these with the help of our five sensory organs. In this chapter, we will discuss the five sensory organs. My dear students, this is our body. And our body have different organs like our eye, nose, mouth, ear, our hand, our feet. All the organs have different work and they can do this work by themselves. <coughs> Nobody command them to do this. And we have five sensory organs also. The five sensory organs are our eye, nose, mouth, ear and our skin. They are our five sensory organs. And our, we have organs like our eyes. These eyes help us to see anything. Our nose, these things help us to take the smell. We uh, taste food with the help of our tongue. So, and with the help of our ear, we can hear uh, these uh, different kinds of sound. So, they have different work. Now, in this chapter, we will discuss about the five sensory organs of our body. Here, <coughs> lesson number one, two, three, sensory organs. Brain is the chief commander of our body. Coordination of our different activities is regulated by the direction of brain. Brain is located within our skull. Residing within the skull, how does it regulate all the activities that take place in and outside the body? Now we learn. We see with our eyes, hear with our ears, smell with our nose and taste food with our tongue and feel heat or pressure with our skin. We can carry out all these activities due to our sensory organs. We have five sensory organs. Our eyes, ears, nose, tongue and skin send all the information from the outside world to our brain. With the help of these sensory organs, our brain is informed of everything happening in the world around us. Suppose you are crossing the road and suddenly a car comes in front of you. Your eyes will instantly let your brain know about it. Your brains will then send messages to your muscles to stop walking and not to cross the road. As a result, you will stand still instantly. All these functions are being carried out by the commands of our brain. Now, eye. Eye is the most important part of our body because with the, uh, this eye, with the help of this eye, we can see this beautiful world. We can see our parents. If we don't have eyes, it will be difficult for us to study <coughs> eye. We can see everything around us with the eyes. How is our eye structure? We have a pair of eyes placed inside the orbit in front of the skull. 
The eyes are positioned inside the orbit with the help of six muscles. So you can ask me what is the orbit? Orbit means here is our facial um, structure, facial structure, uh, the, this is called our skull and our eyes is here and it is in this <coughs> orbit. Here is a space and it is called orbit and our eyes is placed in this orbit and it is connected to our brain with the six, uh, six muscles. <coughs> These muscles help us to move the eyeballs. What we call tear is the secretion of water from the eye. Where does this tear come from? The water secreted from the tear glands is known as tear. Tear keeps the eye moist and it cleans the eye by washing away dirt. The eye is in fact a part of the skin. The cells of the skin turn transparent at the front of the eye and opaque at the back. As a result, human eyes act like a camera. So when the skin comes to our eyes, it becomes transparent and in the back side of our eye, it will be opaque. That's why our eyes is like a camera. <coughs> the function of different parts of the eyes are described below. Number one, eyelids. They are the outer covering of the eye. Eyelids can be opened and closed. They close to keep dirt away from the eye. That means the cover of our eye, it is called eyelids. That means that uh, which is uh, blinking, it is called eyelids. <coughs> Number two, conjunctiva. The thin and transparent membrane covering the visible part of the eye is called conjunctiva. See here, you see <coughs> there is a picture of eye and a different parts of eye like anterior chamber, region behind the cornea and iris. There are different parts of eye. Here is the anterior chamber. It is called iris. Cornea. This is called cornea. Lens. Pupil. Posture chamber, region behind the iris. Ciliary body and ciliary muscle. Ciliary muscle helps to um, hold our eyeball in the orbit. This is called retina, optic nerve, uh, macula, retinal blood vessel and vitreous body. Here conjunctiva, the thin and transparent membrane covering the visible part of the eye is called conjunctiva. Our eye is covered with a thin and transparent cover or uh, skin. It is called conjunctiva. The eyeball. This is a spherical ball like structure. Eyeballs are placed inside the orbit. They are composed of three layers. That means our eyes. Inside of the eyelids, it is called eyeball. <coughs> and uh, eyeball um, is always moving. We can move our eyeball. Sclera. Uh, the th uh, eyeball, this is a spherical ball like a structure. Eyeballs are placed inside the orbit. They are composed of three layers. Sclera, the white tough outer layer of the eyeball is known as a sclera. It helps maintain the shape of the eye. No light can pass through it. The uh, shiny layer in front of the sclera is called cornea. It is transparent. It allows light to enter the eye. So, here you see cornea it is called cornea i uh, sclera this is uh, there is a sclera then it is called cornea you can see here here is the cornea and it is called conjunctiva conjunctiva <coughs> sclera uh, uh, b choroid the mid layer of the eyeball is called cho uh, choroid it is a dense pigmented layer it contains many blood capillaries so, choroid, choroid, uh, the mid layer of the eyeball, it is the mid layer of the eyeball, it is called choroid and it is a dense uh, pigmented layer, it contains many blood capillaries. <coughs> iris, here you can see the iris, in front of the, um, in front of the lens, it is called iris, in front of the lens and uh, after cornea, it is called iris. 
the black and round membrane situated at the back of cornea is called iris it is a round opaque and pigmented membrane there is a hole in the middle of the iris which is known as pupil <coughs> you can see here a uh, pupil the hole in uh, iris it is called pupil there is a hole in the middle of the iris which is known as pupil iris is made of muscles the contraction and relaxation of these muscles can dilate and contract the pupil as a result light rays can enter the retina so uh, with the help of pupil uh, light can uh, get inside in the retina <coughs> here is the retina the inside part of the eye is called retina lens there is a biconvex lens behind iris and pupil <coughs> and pupil here you can see lens and this is called lens we um, you can see also different kinds of contact lens using uh, artificial lens is called uh, contact lens so uh, this you i um, mean in, in front of the eye you can also see lens it is called lens there is a biconvex lens behind the pupil the lens is ele uh, elevated in the middle and narrow at the top the lens is held with the choroid by ciliary muscles these muscles contract and relax to change the shape of the lens so muscles relax and contract the lens now number c retina <coughs> here you see the retina there is a picture of a retina this is the innermost layer of the eyeball the innermost layer of the eyeball the innermost layer of the eyeball is called retina eyeball it is uh, a light sensitive layer which consists of rod and cone uh, in the retina you can find rod cells and cone cells they are two different types of cells and rod cells and cone cells you only found in your eyes the lens divided uh, divides the eyeball into two chambers the front chamber is filled with water fluid and the chamber at the back is filled with jelly like fluid this fluid helps light to enter the eye supply nutrition and control the shape of the eyeball so this uh, retina divided the eyeball into two chambers in front chamber it is filled with water fluid and the last chamber is fluid uh, filled with jelly like fluid the fluids help light to enter the eye supply nutrition and control the shape of the eyeball now taking care of eye the eye is a sensitive organ and it requires proper care uh, if proper care is not taken the eye might be prone to many diseases you can take care of the eye in the following ways number 1 clean your eyes regularly with clean water number 2 use a piece of clean cloth to wipe your eyes number 3 eat green leafy vegetables and fruits regularly this contains vitamin a which is good for the eye regular intake of vitamin a helps prevent night blindness now lesson number 4 and 5 here uh, 4 and 5 we have two ears one of each sides of our head other than helping us with hearing ears also help us maintaining the balance of the body our ear is divided into three parts external ear middle ear and inner ear so here you see the picture of a ear this is called the external ear this part is called external audit uh, external part of the ear then this part is called middle ear this part is called middle ear and the last part of the uh, ear is called inner ear this is called the inner ear this is the uh, external ear middle ear and inner ear now number 1 outer ear outer ear is composed of pinna ear hole and ear drum here you can see this is called pinna the outer part of our ear it is called pinna and it is very flexible and there is cartilage that's why the bone is cartilage that's why we can move it and it is flexible it is called pinna and the pinna is the outer ear <coughs> part of outer ear <coughs> then ear hole here is the ear hole that means 
the hole we, uh, in our ear that we can see uh, from the outside is called ear hole. Number ear drum. Here is the ear drum. This uh, canal is called ear drum. Pinna. It is a part of the outer ear. It is a flap of skin and cartilage. Its main function is to dispatch sound into the ear hole. It is called pinna. Now, number B, ear hole. Pinna is connected to a tube uh, called ear hole. Here you can see ear hole. It is a tube like structure and ear hole is here. It is called ear hole, ear drum. The ear hole ends with the uh, ear drum. This is the last part of the external ear. It is called ear drum and it is the last part of the external ear. Now number two, middle ear. This is situated between the external and inner ear. Middle ear is situated between the external ear and inner ear. It is a sac filled with air and it contains three small bones, bones malleus, ingus and stapes. You see here it is the uh, middle part of the ear and here you see malleus. This, is, this bone is called malleus, incus, this bone is uh, called incus and also here is another bone this is called stapes. And um, stapes is the smallest bone of our body. Which is the smallest bone of our body? Stapes is the smallest uh, bone of our body. With the help of this bone, sound uh, reaches the inner ear. A tube uh, connects the ear with the back of the throat. The function of this tube is to balance the ear pressure both in and outside the ear drum. The uh, um, work of the middle ear is to uh, tube is to balance the air pressure both in and outer side of the ear drum. Now, uh, number three, inner ear. It is situated inside the auditory capsule bone. It is situated in a auditory capsule bone. It is divided into two major chambers, utriculus and sacculus. This uh, inner ear is divided into two parts, utriculus and sacculus. Utriculus, this chamber consists of three semicircular canals. Among uh, three, these three canals, two are vertical and one is horizontal. They are covered with hair-like sensory nerves. These canals are filled with fluid. When the fluid uh, is released, these sensory nerves are stimulated and then impulses are sent to the brain. The brain then sends message to the rest of the body, those maintaining a balance of the body. Here you see <coughs> inner part of our um, ear and here is utriculus and sacculus. This is called utriculus and here is sacculus. Sacculus, this chamber of the inner ear has a quiet shell like structure. This is known as cochlea. You see here this is the cochlea. This uh, um, ball shaped structure is called uh, cochlea. The wall of the cochlea have auditory sensitive cells. These cochlea walls are made of auditory sensitive cells. The coil tube is filled with fluid. Inside of this coil there is the fluid. Inside of this coil there is fluid and the uh, wall is made with sensitive auditory sensitive cells. <coughs> Taking care of ear, ear is an auditory organ. We can have hearing impairment if we do not take proper care of our ear. To take care of our ear, we should take the following steps. Number one, cleaning ears regularly. Number two, being careful that water does not get into ear while bathing. Number three, consulting a doctor if any insect or other aligned bodies enter the body. And number three, avoiding listening to music in high volume. My dear students, in our today's class, we discuss our two sensory parts of our body, um, ear and our eyes. I hope you understand our today's class and you will learn this chapter attentively and try to understand what the chapter is saying. Uh, till then, keep well. Assalamu